Uh, well, good morning. Uh, I, I, if you can tell, I am not Scott this morning. I'm a whole lot better looking than he is, I must say. And, uh, and I promise you, I will not put you to sleep like he does, because I watch him just about every Sunday, too. So, uh, and I hope that you all are a much livelier bunch to the 8 o'clock. Y'all could tell them I said it because they was too quiet. No, I'm just kidding. So when Wavis is around here, we're going to loosen up because I, like I like to have a little fun. Now, don't get me wrong. We need to worship God. That's what we're here to do. But I think God wants us to have fun, too. So take your teeth out if you want. Take your shoes off and let us still praise God. And so I'd like to welcome you all this morning here at Zion Methodist Church. And I'm kind of nervous in a way because uh, my favorite, one of my favorite preachers is over here. And uh, he's my favorite preacher over here. So, on this, that's right, that guy right there with the red tie on. So anyway, I'd like to welcome you all this morning. So it might be a little different today because uh, we don't have a bulletin. So we're going to play it by ear, but yet we're going to let the spirit move at the same time. So we'll probably be doing little things maybe a little bit different from the normal routine, if that's okay with you all. So again, welcome to worship. And then Miss Ashley is going to come and kind of give us some announcements. And then after the announcements, uh, she'll just lead her from there. So welcome to worship and thanks for being here. Morning. Um, well, the first announcement is please take your Easter lilies home. Wednesday, April 16th, uh, nope, 19th from 6 to 8 ish, the Wildlife Supper. Meats and drinks will be provided. Families bring sides and desserts. The meal is at 6 with a special guest speaker at 7. Everyone's welcome, men and women alike. Church conference will be May 17th to determine Zion's possible denominational affiliation. And Wavis Jordan will be our guest speaker today. <laughs> Great. Please stand for our call to worship. It comes from Psalm 31 through 5. I will exalt you, Lord, for you rescued me. You refused to let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried to you for help, and you restored my health. You brought me up from the grave, O Lord. You kept me from falling into the pit of death. For his anger lasts only a moment but his favor lasts a lifetime. You may last through the night, but the joy comes through the morning. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now the band will yes. sing All clean. Right, we're going to do a song called Clean. Uh, my boys have left me, so me and Lolita are going to take this one. You 
Choir will do a special song for us.
John 21, 1 through 19. Later, Jesus appeared again to the disciples beside the Sea of Galilee. This is how it happened. Several of the disciples were there, Simon, Simon Peter, Thomas, nicknamed the twin, Nathaniel from Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples. Simon Peter said, I'm going fishing. We'll come too, they all said. So they went out in the boat, but they caught nothing all night. At dawn, Jesus was standing on the beach, but the disciples couldn't see who he was. He called out, fellows, have you caught, have you caught any fish? No, they replied. Then he said, throw out your net on the right-hand side of the boat, and you'll get some. So they did, and they couldn't haul in the net because there were so many fish in it. Then the disciples Jesus loved said to Peter, it's the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his tunic, for he had stripped for work, jumped into the water, and headed to shore. The others stayed with the boat and pulled the, load, the loaded net to shore, for they were only about a hundred yards from the shore. When they got there, they found breakfast waiting for them, fish cooking over a charcoal fire, and some bread. Bring some of the fish you've just caught, Jesus said. So Simon Peter went aboard and went aboard and dragged the net to the shore. There were 153 large fish, and yet the net hadn't torn. Now come and have some breakfast, Jesus said. None of the disciples dared to ask him, Who are you? For they knew it was the Lord. Then Jesus served them the bread and the fish. This was the third time Jesus has appeared to his disciples since he had been raised from the dead. After breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, Peter replied, you know I love you. Then feed my lambs, Jesus told him. Jesus repeated the question, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, Peter said, you know I love you. Then take care of my sheep, Jesus said. A third time he asked, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt that Jesus asked the question a third time. He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said, then feed my sheep. I tell you the truth. When you were young, you were able to do as you liked. You dressed yourself and went wherever you wanted to go. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and others will dress you and take you where you don't want to go. Jesus said this to let him know by what kind of death he would glorify God. Then Jesus told him, follow me. The word of the Lord. Okay. How many kids are out there want to come up here? And if you want to be with the kids, you can come up here too. Oh, he's back again. This is my little buddy right here. Right here. That's my little buddy right here. Am I right or am I right? I got a candy for you if you say yes, I'm your buddy. Uh, am I? You like peppermint? So tell everybody out there that you're my buddy. If not, you can't get peppermint. Don't y'all love to bribe a kid? All right, there you go. Okay, I don't even know who Candace this is, but I'm giving out somebody's candy. I think it's Brock's. It's Brock's? Oh, okay. It's Brock's candy, gotcha. Brock's candy. I'm giving Brock's candy away. All right. Later today in the sermon, she just read the scripture about... The well, main focus, I guess, I'm going to talk about is Peter and Jesus. So after Peter and Jesus went swimming all night, Peter and the rest of the 
rest of the cool dudes, so to speak. They went fishing, and they catch anything all night. So this weird man, if I could say that, decided, was on shore all night, probably what it sounds like in the scripture. Well, but my, my thinking that this strange man was out all night. And while those this Peter and disciples fishing, so this silly man, I guess, so to speak, decided to tell them to throw the nets on the side of the boat because they hadn't caught anything all night. And those guys took this man at his word, even though they didn't know who it was at the time, and they caught bountifuls and bountifuls of fish. And then finally they realized who it was. They realized it was Jesus. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. Now, Jesus and Peter decide to go to a little bitty conversation. And so this little bitty conversation, Jesus and Peter had a nice little talk. And what did she read a little while ago? What did Jesus ask Peter? Did y'all hear it? What did Jesus ask Peter? Do you love me? Do you love me? Very good answer that I was looking for. So each time that Jesus, this is my little thinking, all right? Okay, now, Jesus, every time Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? You know what he told, and I like the interpretation she read, okay? That was a great interpretation. And each time that Jesus asked Peter, do you love me? He told Peter to go out and feed my sheep. Then he told Peter to go out and tend my sheep. Then he turned right back around and told him to go out and feed my sheep. Now, here's what I'm going to encourage you all to do. Not only was Jesus asking Peter, do you love me? What he was saying was, do you love him? And Peter's like, oh, yeah, I love you, Jesus. But what I think, in my little thinking, in my little interpretation when I read that, not only was Jesus asking Peter that, but he was saying to Peter, I think, that, hey, if you love me, you take that love outside these four, four walls, in other words. That's what I think Jesus was trying to tell Peter from what some of the things that he said. So I'm going to challenge you all on something, all right? And here's what I'm going to challenge you all. I know one, two, three, four, five, six. I know all six of y'all love Jesus, right? Okay, now y'all start back school tomorrow, correct? Okay, now do me a favor. Darn it, you got to start back school tomorrow, don't you? Yep. Yep. Poor guy. So here's the deal. Could y'all do me a favor? Can all week, can you tell your parents to buy you one week worth of candy? And uh, y'all take that candy to school. And can y'all eat a piece of candy, but you're going to have to share it with your friends? Can y'all do that? Can y'all do that? Okay, if, okay, good deal. That's good. For the rest of the school year, you tell your parents to buy you some candy once a week. <laughs> and you tell your parents that you want to share some candy the rest of the school year, all right? Now you can do that, or you could do me another favor you can do. You could tell your parents if y'all take lunch at school, how many of y'all take lunch at school? You take lunch at school? But to tell your parents to make you an extra sandwich or whatever your favorite, but it has to be your favorite. So what's your favorite food? Uh, a bologna sandwich. Oh, bologna sandwich. I like you, my child. I like you because I like bologna too. What's your favorite food? Doritos. Oh, Doritos. See, here's what we could do. So you could take an extra bologna sandwich, take an extra bag of Doritos, and then you just can share with some of your friends at school, whatever y'all get, all right? Because, you know, even though it just might be candy or it just might be Doritos or bologna or whatever kind of food you like, if somebody might really needed that food or needed that candy. So guess what you're doing? You're doing just like Jesus told Peter to go out and feed my sheep or go out and tend my sheep. And let's just kind of say if somebody you see maybe have some holes in their shoes or something like that, is it our job to pick at them if they have holes or something in their shoes or maybe in their shirt? Nope. And you know what you can do is tell your mom and dad, say, hey, look, one of my friends got a hole in his shirt or hole in his shoes or something. He need a new pair of shoes. That's what Jesus wants us to do is to feed his sheep and to tend his sheep. All right? So 
That's your little sermon for today. And I'm going to give you all a little test. I don't know who Candace this is, but I'm going to give you three pieces. I don't want you to do me a favor. I want you to keep one for yourself and give one for one somebody else and another for somebody else, all right? Can you do that? I'm going to give you, I'm talking about somebody here in the church. Can you keep one for yourself and share this with somebody else, all right? Okay. okay. And I want to give you three. That means you keep one for yourself and you're going to do the same thing and give somebody else one and somebody else one. And then here's yours. And you got to share two more, okay? Okay. Can you do that? All right. There you go, little guy. All yours. His brother, his dad is my brother. His dad is my favorite brother. Am I right or am I right? Okay. There you go. Now, all right. Well, let us, let us say a little prayer. All right. Can we pray? All right. Dear God, thank you for this day. And we want to say, can you help us this week, God? And not only this week, but the rest of our lives to show your love like you have shown us. And we want to do what you told Peter, to go out and feed and not only feed, but tend to your sheep. Not just with physical things, but also your godly love. And not only that, help us to tell people about your word, dear God. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up, little ones. Uh, before we do the uh, go into the sermon, are there any joys or concerns? We could do a little pastoral prayer. So, if there's any joys or concerns we need to lift up this morning, it's a joy to be with you all today. Somebody got the hand up in the back. Okay. Okay. Let's keep him in our prayers. Anybody else? Okay, yes, ma'am. A great nephew just had surgery on his arm and hand in St. Louis, and uh, he was not great. Dawson. Dawson. Okay. All right. Anybody else? If not, let us pray. Oh, God, we have gathered in this wonderful place today to hear your word. And not only hear your word, but be your witness. We ask you and community gathered in the name of Jesus. Help us to live lives that are bond to each other. And that you have created us to have a great bond together in you. And not only that, help us to spread our compassion, not only our compassion, but our love, like you have done for us, dear God. We ask you to grant healing to those need to be healed and those names that were lifted up to us this morning, dear God. Holy Spirit, as we leave this place later today, may we live in unity with God and not only with God, but with one another. And now we're going to say the prayer of dear God. You taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven. I don't have to, I know we shouldn't have picks out of the Bible. The whole Bible, don't get me wrong, is my favorite. But for some reason, 
This is one of my favorite scriptures that I love to read from. And the reason why I'm saying that because I am wondering that if Peter was my long lost brother. And the reason I say that because he was a fisher of fish at one time in his career. And I love to fish. So how many of you all out there like to be fit, like to fish? Raise your hand. I'm gonna tell y'all now, don't be shy with me, okay? So it's okay to lift your hands and say amen if you want to. But anyway, I love, I love fishing. Uh, one, uh, how many of y'all know that uh, Yoga Bear, they say it for, from St. Louis? You know, he was a St. Louisian, I heard. I kind of read that somewhere. How many of y'all knew that? And I'm going to repeat a quote, and I hope there's no teachers out there because uh, I'm going to say something that's not, probably not good English, but I'm going to repeat what Yoga Bear said. And he said, the future ain't what it used to be. And I want you all to think about that for a moment. And the reason why I said that, because that may have been very close to what Peter thought. Now, in the John's Gospel, it kind of talks about that Peter has been in a room with Jesus a couple of times. And not only that, that Peter have seen and not only seen Jesus, but heard Jesus speak. In my opinion, Peter, along with the other disciples, doesn't have not one single clue what to do with the knowledge that they have, if I can say that. So it was said that Peter wants bright future as right hand, as Jesus' right hand man is all over as at four as he could see. So Peter, poor Peter, decided to throw up his hand and he announced that he is going fishing. I, I felt the same way this morning when I was studying this sermon, kind of reading over it. I thought about throwing up my hand and going fishing too and say, I am not going to Zion Methodist Church because I want to go fishing. Then I thought, nah, I better show up. So in other words, what I'm getting at about Peter, Peter is returning to his past. He is picking up exactly where he was before he met our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And he will resume his profession as a fisher of fish. So guess what, you all, and I, if I was dead with them back then, I probably would have done the same thing. So the disciples decide to follow Peter's lead. Now I got a question here, off the topic, off the cheat note here. How many of y'all, if I would have came in and said, let's go fishing, would y'all would have gone with me instead of being here at church? <laughs> Be honest, yeah. I saw one head shake over here. Maybe we'll do that next Sunday when Pastor Scott come back right before his sermon and say, hey, let's go fishing. Just kidding. So I guess you all, I guess going fishing was, for them back then, was probably a whole lot better sitting in the locker room. So they loaded up the boat. They fished all night after they'd done all this. And just after the sun risen, if I could say this, it, there was a strange man, in other words, that's what I probably would have thought if I was out there then, was standing on shore. And this strange man, for some reason, hollers at him. And he kind of asked him, 
and basically said, you don't have any fish, do you? Not one single fish, do you? And of course, they didn't catch anything all night. And if I was out fishing, and Jesus decided to show up and ask me that question, and then he turned around and told him to throw the net on the right side of the boat, and they did it. But as nosy as I am, I'll be the first one to tell you, do you think if I was out there fishing all night, do you think that Wavis here is going to throw out a net on the side of the boat, especially I don't know who you are? I will be nosing around and say, who is this man telling me to throw the net on the side of the boat? I'll be asking all kind of questions later. I mean, first, before I thought, planning on throwing it out there, okay? But this goes to show me how much faith that these guys had. I probably would have thought they was a little nutty for throwing it out at first. But this goes to show me, and this builds up my faith, because they listen to this guy, and they throw the net on the right side of the boat, and they caught over a hundred and something fishes. And as they pull that abundant catch, then finally, finally, one of the disciples realized who was on the shore. And again, they had a lot of faith that I probably wouldn't have if I didn't know who it was. They were realized it was Jesus. And Peter, he was so excited that he does the opposite what most of us would have done. He put on his clothes before he jumps into the water and he swim to where Jesus was. And again, the net is brought to shore and Jesus takes some of their fish and add it to the fish he was already cooking. Now, I'm being silly here because my grandpa was a preacher. And anytime I tell him I'm going preaching, he always asked me, what are you preaching about? So I told him. And I got to this part of the sermon with him. And I said, Grandpa, I want to figure something out here because I'm assuming that he had a fishing pole. Maybe. But I said, you know, Jesus had enough power that I wonder, now, as far as I know, the Bible doesn't say how many fish Jesus already had, just say he added some of that fish to it. I said, I wonder if Jesus had enough power, if he had five fish there, if he just stuck his hand in the water and said, I need five of y'all to come up shore now. And five of them showed up, you know. See, see how the power, if I could kind of can think that away a little bit, you know. But I still kind of wonder, you know. But, but anyway, so Jesus tell his follower to come to me. In other words, it is time for breakfast. Because I'm for sure those poor guys was hungry. To me, what a scene from Scripture, a great scene from Scripture, overflowing nets that shows us that God abounded for provision for us. A great meal by Jesus for his followers. A foretaste of the heavenly, heavenly banquet that awaits us. What more could there be? And what more could one expect? But there is more and it includes something unexpected. In my opinion, it is time for the come to Jesus meeting. And it's time to resolve some th things that are still unresolved. And I felt this kind of unique as I was reading things and my brain was kind of uh, going there. What I found unique was Jesus called Peter to come to him 
for a little bit of conversation. So I'm taking it as that maybe the rest of the disciples was probably eating, and maybe when they got done eating, they might have been taking the nap. I don't know. But what I kind of find prior to this reading, what did Peter do to Jesus? And I think it's found in the Matthew's Gospel. What did Peter do to Jesus before Jesus was crucified? And even Jesus told him to his face. Does anybody know? Can somebody tell him? Say that again. Oh, yes. That's what the answer I was looking for. Now, I can imagine that Jesus, Peter denied him even when Jesus told Peter, you're going to deny me. He told him that. And Peter said, no, I'm not going to deny you. And he did anyway. And I can imagine that Jesus was probably hurt. I mean, Jesus knew that Peter was going to do it. So on the one hand, Jesus probably wasn't. But then on the other hand, I can imagine that he was a little hurt. But if you look at this go, go round, when, Peter, when Jesus asked Peter three different times, do you love me? About the third time that Jesus asked him, guess what? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him three different times, do you love me? And three times, of course, Peter said, yes, Lord, I do love you. And I feel like the three questions that Jesus asked Peter and the three answers Peter gave to Jesus, I feel like it was Jesus' way or Jesus' method, method of sharing, showing Peter that he is forgiven and fuller restored. And I feel like this action is also happened to uh, transition, so to speak, Peter and through him, the other disciples. That's what I feel like. So Jesus moves them from the resurrection event to the future by giving them a new commission. Now, if you notice, every time Jesus asks Peter, do you love me? What did Jesus kind of gave Peter after he said, basically, yes, Lord? He told Peter to do what? Feed my sheep, to tend my sheep, and to feed my sheep. And so Jesus sent his followers out into the world to feed and to tend his sheep. Now Jesus sends his followers into the world to share the love they have for Christ with everyone else. Now in this Easter season, we're like Peter in my opinion. The other followers of Jesus have inquired, encountered the risen Christ like we did last week. We have celebrated Jesus' resurrection through holy uh, scriptures. and Y'all probably had a whole bunch of pretty flowers around. Heard the bell ring before the service. And probably had a baptism. And share meals at tables together probably last week. And so Jesus is doing that today with us. He's doing that with us. He's inviting us today so that we may have witnessed the love of God, the grace of God. And as we have not done so already on our Christian journey, Jesus is calling to come to him that come to Jesus' meeting, if I can say that. That meeting where our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ forgive us and reconciles us to him. That great meeting where we look in the eye, if I can say that, and profess our love for him. And that meeting where Jesus sent us out from behind closed doors into the world where Jesus is telling us to feed his sheep and to tend his sheep. Hmm. 
do you love me? That is one powerful question. Do you love me? I want y'all to think about that for a minute. And I kind of got goosebumps as I was preparing this. It was like Jesus was talking to me instead of Peter. Do you love me? That is a question we must all answer. And I want to know something, and I want to, to think about it, because I did. I'll be the first one to tell you. That question hit home with me, too. Have you truly thought about that question? Do you love me? Do you love Jesus? That question. Do you love me? Was Jesus is asking. And I want y'all to think about that. Think about that very closely. I want y'all to think about it for a minute. And as Jesus forgave and restored people, guess what? It's our job to do that too. If Jesus did it, we got to forgive people. We got to re help restore people. Jesus is teaching us that directly from his hand, our master's hand. I want y'all to think about that. And as Jesus feed us, as that's our job to feed other people. As Jesus was a servant, a servant, and tend to his sheep, we'll be we'll like Jesus. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to tend to people and be a servant to this world. And when I say world, and what I told the eight o'clock service, when I say world. I don't, well, we're in this world, but my thinking, I'm not talking about other parts of the world like London and all that. Yes, we should do things for them too. But I'm talking about, when I sit, think of world, I think about Jesus just talking about like right here in Gordonfield or Jackson or Cape or Tilsit. That's what I think Jesus meant, just right about in our area here. Do you love me? Hmm. So as Jesus give his life for the sake of others, we too are to give our lives for the sake of others. And I know God will get the glory out of it. Do you love me? Now I'm going to make it just a little tiny turnaround here, just a little bit. So I'm going to have this turnaround. Now I'm going to bring it on home to our home here. I'm going to start it this way. If Jesus was here and he said, do you love me? What would you tell Jesus? Let's try it again. They're just as quiet as the 8 o'clock people. I thought this would be the livelier bunch because they slept in this morning. Let's try it again. If Jesus was here and Jesus said, do you love me? What would you say? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I love you. I got an answer finally. Hallelujah. All right, let's try it again. All right. If Jesus right now says, do you love me? What would you say? Yes, Lord. Okay, that's, that's a little bit better than the first two times. Because I was about to get a little hurt like Peter, you know. So let me ask that question again. If Jesus right now said, do you love me? What would you say? Yes, Lord. All right, that's a whole lot better. All right. Now. I'm going to break it personal. All right? And I'm going to ask you all a very powerful question. Do y'all love me? Yeah. I quit. Church is dismissed. Let's go home.
we're going to sing, we're going to sing our last song, Let's Go Home. Okay. Give him a chance, give him a chance. Okay, okay. Now let's try this again. Now, do y'all love me? Yes. Do you, let me ask y'all one more time. Do y'all really love me? Yes. Okay, now that's better. Now I want y'all to look at me, and I want y'all to say, Brother Wavis, Come on, Brother Wavis. Do you love us? I'm going to think about that for a minute. Now, wait a minute, brother. Uh, no, sister, y'all took for answering. answering to go, I'm going to take my time now. <laughs> now, she wants me to answer right away, right? I, I'll answer that in a minute because I'm going to have to think about that one. Now, I'm going to do something here in a minute. Now, I do have a question, and that's what I was going to ask. Now, what ways do we, would you all show your love for other people? Because I know y'all love Christ, don't get me wrong. But what ways do y'all show y'all love to? A hug. A hug, okay. Helping them. Okay, say that again. Helping them. Helping them. Yeah. That's some of the answers I would look for, a hug and help. Say what now? Carpooling, okay. Anything you need? need? Rise to somewhere. Rise to somewhere. Did you say something else? Making meals. Oh, so that's what making meals. Okay, that's a way of showing love. Encouragement. Encouragement. That's another good one. Y'all are saying some of the answers I'm looking for. I think y'all read the sermon. (laughs) What else? What else? Visiting, praying. praying. Okay, those are some good answers. Oh, hallelujah, I was looking for the answer too. That was a good one. So there was a lot of ways of showing love. I love to tell this story about my dad's side of the family. Oh, Lord. Every time we get together, and there's always the men. I have to smack my dad every time. But when my dad showed his love, and there's six of us boys in my family, I hardly ever don't ever, he only do it with me because I think he learned him a lesson. Well, he never, every once in a while, he'll tell all of us boys except me, he loves us. But every time my dad show his love, he always give us a hug and kiss us on the cheek. And every time he does, I go smack. You didn't have to hit me. Well, you shouldn't be kissing me on my cheek. I'd rather say I love you than you kiss me on the cheek. And he even does that in public. I hope the rest of you dads don't do your boys that way. If you do, you boys let me know if your dad do that to you, okay? And then I learned, now here it is, my dad in his 60s and my grandpa in his 90s. And my grandpa got 12 boys and we get together on holidays, and I noticed just last week when they came down for Easter, you know what he did? Five of my uncles was there, and my dad makes six. The rest of them couldn't come, we understood. And I watched my grandpa, and you know what he did to my dad and his brothers? Now, my grandpa did tell him he loved him. And do you know that he hugged my dad and kissed my dad on the cheek? And I finally asked him, I said, why do y'all do that? He said, my dad did that. So it kind of was been a generational thing. Now, mom's had just a big old hug, and that's it. Now, mom learned her lesson because you can't hit a woman. Of course, you know, I wouldn't probably would just gave a little tap or something, but she know my looks. Now, my mom got a habit of pinching me on my cheeks. Now, that drives me nuts, too. So anyway, we all got a way of... Showing love. Saying it is great. Showing it is another, and that's great too. Now I want y'all to do me a favor. I want all of y'all to stand up for a minute. Because I was told, ooh, we're only supposed to last an hour, I was told. So anyway, let us stand real quick. And uh, y'all asked me a question a little while ago, right? Yeah. Yeah. Did, did I answer y'all back? No. 
Well, I'm going to think about it for a minute. And I want y'all to do me a favor, because I think I did this the last time I was here. And I want y'all to come out of that pew, because y'all are a great church family here. And uh, I want y'all to kind of give each other a hug and tell each other y'all love each other, all right? Now, I will say this, you're supposed to love your enemies, right? Now, if you got an enemy in this church, uh, come and see me first, because I don't want, I don't want, no, I want Scott to invite me back. So come and see me, all right? Of course, I know I'm just teasing when I say that, so let's come out to pew for just a little bit and tell each other you love them, all right? We do that all the time. Yeah. Thank you, Wayne. You're welcome. Well, I'm going to make it. Yes, I'm going to do it. So we'll do that last song, Oh, How I Love Jesus, and that was on 170, right? Yes. And then... All right, now you all can, y'all can be seated. Y'all did a good job. Y'all, y'all did an excellent job. Now, uh, did you all uh, ask me a question earlier? I, I thought I did. Did I, I didn't answer you all? No. Oh, I didn't? No. No. Well, after long thoughts about it, and I really mean this from the heart, I do love each and every one of you all, and I want to let you all know that. And let me tell you all something. I'll never forget, if my memory served me right, Pastor Ann was y'all pastor at the time, and somehow her and I seemed like we made a connection somewhere. And she told me she was the pastor here. And I came to the early service once, and I think I made a came a couple of times when she was here at the second service. And I never ever forget the very first time I ever came to this church, I felt the love that y'all had shown to me right here at Zion. And from that day forward to now, I always have appreciate the love that every last one of y'all have shown me. I'll never forget it. And y'all could continue to show me that love every time I come. And I have witnessed it, and I have felt that love. And I want to be a little encouragement to you all, all right? You all are a people I know for a fact that y'all love God. And not only have I seen you all love God, and what I just saw just a little bit ago, I almost got emotional, so to a point, that's when I turned around just a little bit. Because I saw the love of God in you guys, and not only do I see the love of God in you guys, I see the love that y'all show each other because of the love of God that y'all have. And not only that, with y'all visitors, and I'm, I'm one of them. I see it all the time. And I want to tell y'all this. Y'all keep that love going. And you all have a story to tell. Y'all have the story of the resurrection of Jesus and of God's love. And y'all continue to show that. Because the story of this congregation, the captive of love, that y'all have full of love and forgiveness, and y'all continue to show that love like y'all have done down through the years to accept all who walk in these doors. 
again, y'all have a love to share. But here's the trick, okay? And I'm not saying that y'all not doing it. I liked that love I saw what y'all did for each other. That's when I have you all had y'all to do that. Y'all did it anyway before I even told you. And here's what I want y'all to be encouraging. Not saying y'all not doing it, but let's take that love that I saw just a little bit ago. I want y'all to take that love outside the four walls. Take that love right around here in Gordonville, Tilsit, Jackson, Millersville, Burfordsville, Cape Girardeau, Fruitland, you name it. Including your enemies too. Oh, and advance. All right. So y'all finish taking that love. We're here. We have come. And Jesus keeps asking us right now, do you love me? And you all have answered it honestly and sincerity. Yes, Lord, we love you. And let us now walk out into the future. Jesus attends for us to do. And let's go out and feed his sheep. And let's go out and tend his sheep. And let us go out and serve our Lord by doing those things, what I just said. Going out into the world, showing the love of God to everyone. And everybody say, Amen. Now, I got a habit of changing things around sometimes. So here's what we're going to do. Because I was told y'all were going to talk to Scott right at an hour. So I was told y'all was going to tell Scott if I go over an hour, because I want to beat the Baptist to the chicken. So anyway, here's what we're going to do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this. Where's the ushers? Can I get a couple of guys? Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Here's what I'm going to do. Y'all come up. And then uh, I want y'all to take the, just stand at the door with the offering plates. And then as everybody leaves, they can just take the offering out that way. How's that? But that'll work. That's okay with you all. I could tell already y'all want to say, oh, I can't wait till Pastor Scott come back. <laughs> but let's kind of pray over the offering. Let's do that, okay? Let us pray. Oh, God, we ask you to bless your gift for a world of a hungry world for your grace. And I ask you to bless this world. And I ask you to bless the giver as they bless this ministry right here at Zion Methodist Church. And not only that, but one another through your power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Now I'm going to ask everybody to stand, and our last hymn is going to be 170, 170. Oh, how I love Jesus, 170.
two things. You know what? What touched my heart the most is to see our young people like, wait just a second, come back. <laughs> to see our young kids doing things in church. Don't ever, if a kid want to do something in church, don't ever discourage them. You be with them and help them. Because one of these good days, I'm going to get old and I can't be behind the pulpit all the time. I just had a birthday, Good Friday, and I'm 88 years old. <laughs> so we need our young people. If they throw a fit so they want to go up there and sing in the choir, they might say yam, yam, shushi when they're up there. You let that little kid be, go up there and help them sing. That little kid might be off key every once in a while. But uh, always encourage our young people, all right? And then I want to, the second is, I want to thank Pastor Scott for inviting me to come. It was an honor. And uh, I enjoyed y'all today. And I appreciate him calling and inviting me, reaching out to me. And uh, I love y'all, Pastor. Y'all got a good pastor. And uh, I love him. And thanks for putting up with me. So as we leave this place, let's remember that the light of Christ is leading us out into the world. And may the love of God continue to be in each and every one of y'all's hearts. And remember that Brother Wave has loved each and every one of you. And everybody say, Amen. Amen. Now you can go.